Forgive me, YouTube, for I have sinned. It has been many days since my last video. Anyway, welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel if this is your first visit. Um, that slightly tongue-in-cheek intro is just to reference the fact, uh, the elephant in the room, that I haven't produced any content for God knows how long now. Uh, it has been many months. Um, uh, that is a mix of factors, to be honest. It's partly because a lot of the pre-orders I had um, still haven't shipped, uh, you know, so I haven't really had anything that I really felt passionate about looking at. And also some of the other side projects I was going to do that I, I was thinking about, about you know, creating for the channel. You know, life got in the way, you know, career, etc. Those pesky things. So I just didn't have the focus that I would have if I was doing a figure review. So this is basically a mea culpa. Uh, apologies for those of you who are subscribed and you know, actually take an interest, uh, but that's the reason why I've been really inactive for, for quite some time now. But this little guy dropped unexpectedly. Um, got him yesterday. Wasn't expecting the, the pre-order, oh sorry, the balance payment reminder from Amiga Lock. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased to say, finally got my hands on uh, Fans Toys Variator, which obviously is their, their little version of uh, Gears here. And uh, this, is, this is more of... Um, it's not an unboxing video. It's, again, probably more of a first impressions video. I have unboxed him. I have taken a look at him. I have played around with him a little bit, but not much. I haven't transformed him. As, you know, I haven't really done too much in-depth um, discovery of uh, his posing options and all this kind of stuff. So this is going to be a pretty honest, raw reaction uh, to the figure, um, albeit not, uh, a, you know, an actual first look. So just to be upfront and honest with you. Um, also like to apologise, I've got a really terrible um, sore throat at the moment, so my voice is strained a little bit, um, but I didn't want to wait until it clears up because that could be God knows how long. So apologies for sounding somewhat rougher in this video than I might otherwise. Right, that's the, the usual rambling uh, over, or the preamble, so let's get on to looking at the figure itself. We'll, we'll, we'll start, as always, with a look at the box. Um, you know, pretty standard by now if you've bought any of the recent fans toys uh, figures you'll be you know you'll know what you're getting here decent artwork on the front of the box and then you just have more product info on the sides here and uh, on the ends product shots uh, well not pictures actually but the back is where you actually see the product shots of the figure in its alt mode and its robot mode and some poses with some other figures and also you get the blurb which i will bring into focus there for you hopefully so those of you who do enjoy fans toys takes on the old G1 tech specs can do so uh, or can take a look at uh, what they've written for um, for gears here. But uh, I don't want to dwell on that too much. Hopefully you can pause that if you do want to read it. Let's get that out of the way and then let's bring in a couple of the other bits. Um, so what I want to do is grab quickly. I always forget to take certain things out of the box. Um, the instructions and the collector card because these are obviously pretty standard things as well um, instructions you know nice color instructions with the, the transformation steps in there which I always struggle with so I tend to follow the new transformation videos that they've done um, or started to do sorry for their figures um, but it is useful to have these for reference and you know seen one seen them all haven't you get that out of the way and then uh, uh, talking of seen one seen them all Here's the collector card made of that nice sturdy material. And again, if it will actually focus for you, there we go. It just uh, repeats what it says on the box in terms of his bio, but it also has his uh, his tech specs there, you know, what they call the fire blast and stuff like that and the endurance and all these things. Um, albeit not in English, but you can, you can uh, use a translating app on that if you want to. But there you go, that is uh, Variator's uh, I guess what tech spec card. So without further ado, <clears throat> let's bring the little fella himself in. I'm just going to adjust the camera slightly, bring him down because he's only a he's only a wee boy, so I don't need it as high as I would for some of the others. And on the whole, I am very pleased with this guy. Um, you know, job done. Anyway, video over. Thanks for joining me. No. <laughs> Those of you who are familiar with the channel will know that I'll always find something to nitpick, and this is no different. Um, so I'm not 100% happy with this, but I am pretty happy, I have to say. Um, but we have to be critical, that's the point of the channel, otherwise there's, there's literally no point of doing these things, is there, if we're not going to actually pick out bits. 
But uh, let's give you a quick look around the figure. So, as I said, I've, I've played it. You'll see I've already put a faction symbol on it. Um, I had to go with a water slide because, unfortunately, I didn't have anything else that would fit. Um, a while back, uh, a guy um, from the TFW forums who wishes to remain anonymous, um, lest he gets inundated for similar requests. Um, but he very, very kindly contacted me and sent me a bunch of uh, vinyl decals of varying designs and colours. And I found they're really great because they work a lot better on figures where um, water slides will get lost. So Decepticons putting purple water slides on them, um, unless you use a white backed one, which I don't particularly like, they just get lost. But with a, a vinyl decal, they uh, they don't. They, they obviously, because it's a solid piece of colour, it looks a lot better. Um, they are a bit tricky to to apply and they don't cut small enough for things like this. So that the, the smallest one I had for the Autobots was considerably large, larger than the space available. So I had to go to uh, for a water slide here, but I'm actually quite pleased with how it applied. I think that actually looks all right um, at that size. I, I tried to go one bigger, but it was ever so slightly too big. So that's what I ended up with. Um, so yeah, I do I do like, I, th I feel like adding the faction symbol is like the finishing touch to a figure. It always feels more like an official figure once I've done that. Um, I will probably do a video. I did I did actually record it and then I, I want to re-record it and do a few other bits for those vinyl decals. Um, but um, I think one of the figures I'm going to use for a comparison actually has one applied. So you might get to see what they're like, but they're, they're really good. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to the, the chap who sent them. He knows who he is, uh, especially if he's watched this video. Um, I do appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I hope you haven't been inundated for, <laughs> with requests for uh, for more of them. Um, oh, and also thank you for the lovely Soundwave insert you gave me as well, the chest insert for Soundwave. I should also give a shout out for that because that really does look great in, in Acoustic Wave. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, as to this figure, um, let's give you a little 360. Uh, you know, overall, I think it's a really clean, really nice looking piece. Um, I still haven't taken the QC sticker off. Uh, but yeah, I honestly, you know, looking at it, my initial impressions were very favourable. Um, there are a few bits and pieces, as I said, that I'll point out. Um, out of the box, a few people have mentioned that theirs have come slightly mistransformed, which is by design, I think. Um, but mine, all I needed to do was tab in these shoulder pieces here, which are on that little peg. You need to force them in. Rotate the waist 180 so the feet were facing forward. Um, the backpack was already done properly. I think some some people have mentioned that they've had to like open this backpack up. There's, there's a piece that tabs into there for vehicle mode, but it stows for robot mode to make it slimmer. Um, mine was already like that. Uh, I didn't really have much else to do, to be honest. That, that was kind of it. So yeah, I, I think out of the box, this is one of the cleanest things, uh, cleanest fan stories releases in a while. Uh, let's have a look uh, at some of the accessories before I just Babylon on even further um, you can see I've already attached one of them so this is uh, his gun um, I originally had some problems with this I, I I mean I'm very very anal about this kind of thing um, weird autistic person that I am but uh, I'm really weird about guns being straight and that is ever so slightly off center I've played around with it to get it as straight as I could it's ever so slightly you know off 90 um, but it's not too bad now um, it's slightly better in the left hand actually, but I prefer to have it in his right hand for him because it mirrors how I had uh, my last gears in my display. Um, but anyway, it uses a different tabbing mechanism now. I don't know if you can see it, but the tab is right in the bottom of the of the palm. So it has to sit further back in the hand and it can be a little bit difficult to actually get it in. Uh, it took some playing around with to get better results than I initially had. But uh, that's obviously, you know, his signature weapon. Um, but also... You'll probably remember that in his other in his signature episode, you know, uh, um, he had this gun as well. And uh, I probably won't ever use this, um, but they can combine that like the, you can see this hollow uh, piece here. Well, the, the end of that gun will pop into it and it forms a rifle. Um, probably not something I'll use, but it's a nice option if you if you so desire. And of course, he can just to demonstrate how this works you get the, the gun in like that and then you push it back into the tab he says this is what I said about it being quite tricky to tab in properly um, I found that I had to, to 
negotiate. There you go. Then I've, I've popped it in now. Um, not perfect, but you'll see that it, it's in. <clears throat> and he holds the weapon securely. And that was a little bit straighter, I feel, um, than the uh, the one in the other arm. But yeah, you can have both of these guns as an option if you desire. And as I said, he did he did have uh, in his signature episode changing gears. He did have both of these guns. I don't know if it was actually an animation error, and they just drew this gun incorrectly, and that was what it was meant to be like. But you have both here. Um, let's show you a stock face up close. That's the that's the stock face. Uh, it's a, a nice enough looking face, I think. Kind of gets across his personality of being a bit grumpy. Um, but we get an additional five faces, which is quite a lot. Um, they're not of darkness, but they uh, they are five faces. Um, so you get this shouty face, which I don't know if I like really. I think that seems more brawny. Uh, and I don't actually mean brawny as in the bad cube figure. I mean more brawn-esque, perhaps. Um, it actually does look like one of the old faces that comes with one of the brawn figures I have. Um, doesn't seem like much of a gears thing for me. Um, but it's there if you want it. Um, you get a slight variation on on the misery um, with what is, I guess, slightly more... Excuse me. Oh, that focus. Slightly more sort of dour, kind of like nonplussed look, isn't it? It's got a wider mouth, uh, a little bit more of frowny eyes and just looks a little bit sterner than the stock face. So there's that. A little bit of a downturn to the mouth, maybe. There's that one. And then you get the full on, um, like, oh, come on, focus. Uh, you get the full on sort of misery mode face where he looks really disapproving and sad. And again, that doesn't really, I don't know. I mean, yeah, th th I think there is actually an episode where he looks like this, um, which is what they modeled it on. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's all right, but. I know Gears has got that kind of like grumpy personality and things, but for me, I, I, I go the other way with Gears, which we'll see in a moment. So, speaking of going the other way, here is the smiling face. This is the slightly smiling face. And I quite like this one. I think that's nice. Obviously a smaller mouth, um, but he does look, it does look pretty good there, I think. But the one that I, I like going for with gears, just because it reminds me of the Changing Gears episode, is this just stupidly happy face. I think it's quite funny, you know, just sort of an ironic thing to have gears sort of grinning <laughs> maniacally almost. Well, not maniacally, as it's not maniacal. It's just a happy grin, um, laughing, you know, totally at odds with his usual personality traits. So uh, that's the one that I tend to go for. Um, or will go for, I should say. Um, and to actually swap that out is a pretty easy option, he says, until he tries it on camera. You just pop up the top of his head like this. And then this is on a little peg at the back. Just pop that out. And you'll see that the, the, you know, there's the hole for the peg. So you just grab the face, the replacement face, pop it in, push the head down. And there you go. Got an altogether happier looking gears. And yeah, as as Changing Gears is probably the, the sort of signature episode from the tune, that's the one I'm going to go for. Uh, so anyway, there is one other feature. And what I'm going to need to do is remove this gun to demonstrate. Now, this is shown as going in both hands at various times. In Well, in the instructions, it's showing as being attached to his right hand. But it for me and the other reviewers and other people who've had it in hand, They've all said the same thing, that it doesn't actually fit. Now, this is the, the welding tool that he had in Changing Gears. Fans toys refer to it as a hook, but it's, it's a welder of some description. Now, the way this attaches is pretty familiar for anyone who's had MPs. You close the fist up, you open this. Um, fans toys say to rotate the fist 90. I don't know that you need to, but I'm going to do it because they say to do it. So you rotate the fist and then you close this up. And then this just plugs in um, I won't say it's the most secure connection either like it doesn't really sit fully flush but it does stay in and again you know you've got that additional play option there or display option haven't you now um, what I was saying sorry was the reverse uh, also the, the other um, fist 
when you transform it, it just will not fit. And looking at it and sort of, you know, scrutinizing it as best I can, it seems that there's an ever so slight defect in how it's been molded in, in so much as it's very, very, very fractional. And I'm sure you could probably fix it with a scalpel if you were so inclined. Um, but it looks like there's a, it's slightly thicker on this side, the, the, you know, the, um, the surrounds. So I don't know if I can show you if I, if I actually remove it, maybe I can show you. Um, so you have this little circle here. Don't know how much that's going to focus. Probably not very well. But you have this little circle of metal there, and then you have the two bits on the top and the bottom where the things plug into. There's ever so slightly more material on the right arm or fist connecting point than there is on the left. And because it's such a small tolerance, you know, with these two pieces, that's just enough that you can get one in, but then you can't plug the other one in. So you can get one, but then you can't force the top. You can get the top in, but you can't force the bottom. Whereas on this side, they, you know, it takes a little bit of effort, but they both go in. Um, so yeah, just a little, a little uh, molding error maybe, or, or a tolerance issue. Um, not the end of the world because you know I would probably display it with on the left arm anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, just worth bearing in mind. Uh, and another thing I want to point out, which is, I guess, I guess it's a play option or a display option. You can lift the chest cavity up. And underneath you have Gear's familiar chest. Um, the one bit they have Mr. Trick with is that this piece here is molded. It's not removable. I'm guessing it's because of transformation, but um, there are other figures, as we know, that offer this as a removable disc, personality disc. But this is completely molded. There's not much you can do with that. So there we go. Um, but anyway, that is everything really in terms of play in bot mode um what shall i do let's bring in another figure now oh, here we go here's my existing gears that is uh, going to be retired i have to say serve me well but he will be retired this is bad cubes uh, grump and you can see it's just from a different era isn't it i mean bad cube my, my joke is always up the like the rob liefeld of, of uh, toy producers in that they can't do feet but really they just can't do lower legs um you know everything from the knee down just always looks like garbage um with one or two exceptions maybe um but yeah it's just obviously from a very old design aesthetic isn't it it just doesn't look as tune accurate it's not as clean um it's not quite correctly to scale it's a little bit too short um just a bit boxier nowhere near as sleek so while it's not a bad looking figure in its own right, you know, when you actually compare it to the fans toys release, there's just no contest. Um, and the knees on mine are a little weak, so he tends to topple backwards when I move him. Um, even silly things like the gun, you know, I mean, as, as you can say, I've got them in the same configuration here. Um, but, you know, the gun is a lot thicker on the bad cube. The, the, um, the welding tool just isn't as finessed. Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. There's... There's different options. I think you can. All, all, I think you change the face on this by pushing it, don't you? I'm not going to do it, but I'm pretty sure that's how you do it. And I think maybe he has a laughing face on the other side. But yeah, you just don't get as many options with it. The chest does open, um, but it's not as accurate as you can see. I mean, you look at the difference between this and this, and it's a world apart, isn't it? You know, one's very tune accurate, the other one isn't. Um, but as I said, you can take this disc out. I mean, I say you can. I don't know that I can in this particular moment because I don't think I've got the nails for it. But this 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 disc here does remove, but it's the wrong colour um, and position and everything. So it should be it should be lower down. It should really be down here. But I I, I kind of wish Fans Toys had incorporated that because then it would have been perfect in terms of like references to that particular episode, his signature episode or showcase episode. Um, but it's, it is a minor thing, I guess, and I, I get it for transformation purposes. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's the that's the comparison with uh, with Grump, which I'm still going to keep. I think I probably have it as an alt mode. That's what I do with all the figures that I replace. Is I, I tend to keep them in alt mode. Uh, I, don't, I don't really sell them on because you just don't get what you pay for them most of the time. Um, and I'm a bit, you know, a little bit of a hoarder anyway. But there you go. I don't think anyone can argue that 
the fans' toys. That, sorry, that the uh, the bag cube release looks anything like as accurate as uh, the fans' toys release. Anyway, we'll get this little fella out of the way for the moment. He'll he'll make a return appearance when I do the the vehicle mode um, or the alt mode. I, I, what I want to do is now run through some articulation, and this guy's actually got a pretty good range of motion. Um, not perfect, but pretty good. So. One of the, the first things you'll notice is that the head can do a full 360. Um, it has a little bit of up and down movement. Not much. You can't really look down much. It can look up a bit. But it is actually on an extending post. As you can see there, like there's a little, uh, there's a little post that, that pops up. And once you do that, you then do get a little bit more... Ooh, moved the top of his head and collapsed his face. That's great. That is the one downside, the way that mechanism works. It does have a tendency to do that. Um, so you have to be a bit careful when you're extending it. Um, but you can see that gets me a lot more upwards motion. Um, and you can get a little bit more downwards, but really you're talking just a couple of degrees or a few degrees, really. It doesn't really make him look down. Um, it, you do get a little bit of head wobble, really not much. Um, and I tend to leave it, I, I, you know, I will tend to leave it collapsed, I think, because I'm not going to want him looking back. Uh, and when it is collapsed, you know, it does wiggle, but it's not loose and there's not a huge gap. So I like that. I think that looks pretty good and it works quite well. Uh, the shoulders, um, you can have a 360 on a friction joint here. You can go all the way up to there, uh, almost to 90. Um, and you have the usual rotation at the shoulder there. What would be the bicep rotation, I guess. Um, it is a double jointed elbow. You have one there and there. Oh, I've just ripped that off. I'm actually going to leave that off because we don't need that on for the next part. Um, so you have a double jointed elbow. What I will say though is that it, it does look quite hollow. You know, that's, that is a criticism I will have. Is uh, the design is such that, it's a, yeah, I, I, I don't like these hollow elbows on figures. But you know, I guess there have to be some limitations and some some trade offs. Um, but there it is. Um, I'll demonstrate on this one instead that because I've, I've already put it away, but the wrist, you do get rotation on the wrist and it will obviously go 360 if you need it to. But, you know, you don't really need it to do you? in most of case, most cases. Uh, the hand, obviously, you have the usual molded piece. You have one uh, one thumb there, which is molded. And then you have the four fingers molded on a base base pin. Um, and as you can see, you know, I've already shown you the mechanism for plugging the gun in, but that's what that is. So so those are the arms. One other thing you can do, actually, if you're willing to, you can unpeg the shoulder piece that's supposed to peg into this here. And that obviously gets you more range of motion. By using that, you can actually get the arms up way higher. So you can go up to there. But it, it does obviously break the sculpt a bit, but it's not terrible. I mean, if you were doing that, you know, that would mask it. And it would give you a lot more range of motion. So you could have, you could use that to, to good effect, I think. And then, as I said, the way that works is it just plugs back in like that. And it's pretty sturdy. It doesn't tend to pop off too much. Uh, waist wise, he has a decent amount of rotation. You know, you can do a full 360 on him, uh, which is fine. He does have um, an ab crunch in quotes. But for me, I don't see that. It's more of a transformation joint, I guess, but they do limit, they do use it as an ab crunch in some of the pictures. But it, it's one of those that it's only on this front pin and it's quite loose, but it, it also completely breaks the sculpt for me because there's no mechanism there. You're just looking at a broken, hollow piece of a robot, aren't you, when he uses that? I mean, there are bits where you could, you could definitely use this in certain shots where it wouldn't look like it. So you could, do, you could take pictures where this would look good, but in three-dimensional space, it isn't the best. Like, you know, as I say, from that angle, not too bad because you're masking it. But once you sort of move the arm out of the way, then you're very much looking at a broken, a broken body. Um, so it's, these, these kinds of ab crunches aren't my favourite, but I do appreciate that they've put it in. And, you know, as I say, it actually holds better than I thought, or than I gave it credit. It's not super stiff, super stiff, but it's not super loose either. Um, anyway, I'm going to uh, connect that back up. Um, down to the hips, we have the usual side skirts there. Um, one of my biggest criticisms of this figure is that they've gone for the dreaded single 
hip skirt flap at the front, which I hate. I just think that looks totally awful. Um, because once you get past a certain range on the legs, uh, you have no, no choice but to engage it. Um, out to the side, you get a good range of motion on the friction joint. And you get a good range of motion here as well, you know, on the, the thigh swivel. Going forward and back, they are on stiff ratchets, but you can only really do two clicks before you start to engage that hip skirt, which is fine for the leg that you're moving, but then of course the other leg is completely open, so you see all of the gubbins in there that you shouldn't see. But it does have a, a reasonable range of motion, as you can see, you can kick up to just above um, the 90 horizontal, um, and going back, it's not too far either or not sorry not too bad either you can get quite far back the knees are similar they they are on friction but they have a good range of motion you know you can get a good bend on them so that's good um and i've already covered off the uh the swivel uh, the thigh swivel um coming right down to i guess what would be the last bit of articulation the feet um there really is, this is the weakest part of the figure overall in terms of articulation. Um, and again, probably due to the design, but it, it is something that is coming out on a lot of the mini bots. I've noticed um, uh, their brawn was the same, uh, their huffer, uh, even their cliff jumper to an extent, I think, maybe from memory, maybe not. But um, definitely the brawn and huffer had very limited uh, articulation on the lower ends. And I think it's just to do with the way they design their vehicle modes. But essentially, the only articulation you have is this ankle ankle tilt here there's no toe tilt um, there's no ball joint there so you're not getting any movement other than that so you can't really get you can't really do too many dynamic running poses because the feet are always flat um, you can do a wide stance obviously because you can tilt that fairly wide but it's not a natural pose is it um, so for me, that's the weakest element of the figure in terms of articulation. But uh, all things considered, the articulation overall is pretty good. So I can forgive that one thing not being all that great when the rest of it is everything you would need um, and maybe even a little bit more. So I'm not going to knock too many points off for that, but it's definitely worth mentioning that it is uh, not quite what it could be. Um, in terms of aesthetics, I just want to want to sort of you know we obviously talked about that with grump uh with the comparison with grump but variator i think is a lot closer to the tune obviously there are a couple of bits that aren't completely tune accurate like in the cartoon the character model had a really wide weird looking head and that's not quite depicted the same here in some shots he did look more like this but mostly he had a stupid massive head which almost took up the whole top of his body um, i actually prefer these proportions but still not entirely too inaccurate from that point of view. Um, similarly, this chest is too um, shallow. So like uh, if I bring Grump back in, um, you'll see that he has much deeper lines here on the chest. The chest is more pronounced when it sticks out. And that is how it is in the cartoon. So this chest is actually too flat. This needed to be more pronounced, more raised with more of the red. Uh, it's obviously more accurate from the design. You know, this, this whole bit here is very accurate but it doesn't stick out enough. And again, I'm guessing this is to do with the transformation. I haven't actually transformed it yet, but one can imagine it's to do with the alt mode and the way things fit together. They couldn't make this more pronounced, but that's one thing that deviates. Um, the colors on it are reasonably well matched. I think this bit here, these bits of plastic things that clip in, they're the only bits of the reds that look a little bit mismatched, really. The rest of it's pretty good. Um, the blues are pretty uniform, at least in this mode. Um, apart from the bits that aren't meant to be, that are meant to be windows like these. But uh, I will say that I think the blue is a slightly too light. It needs to be a bit darker for it to be too inaccurate. Um, I do like that they're going for a uniform look, though. They All of their mini bots, well, not all of them, but the bigger mini bots, like Braun and Huffer, for example. Um, Cliff Jumper doesn't have this, but Braun and, Cliff, Braun and Huffer have this metalli uh, metallicized paint, which does look nice, um, but... You know, once you get used to it, it's a stylized look. It's not the colors aren't in, entirely truthful and accurate to the tune, but they do form a coherent look overall when you group them together. So, again, I can forgive it not being exactly the right shade. It's close enough. Um, and when you have a light source on it, the metallic paint makes it look darker than it does. It looks more cyan to the naked eye under 
natural light but in this light it does actually reflect and look a bit darker um so yeah i don't hate it i i'm just i'm really you know these are my nitpicky points uh, on the whole though you know it's a really really great looking rendition of the character you know i don't really mind you can see the the tires at the back here that's not a massive thing you know god when you compare it to what we did have um <laughs> it's, it's no competition is it but again i think that the sort of flatter matte color um the darker blue on this is probably more akin to what i would see for gears um whereas uh you know this is slightly stylized but anyway um on the whole really lovely robot mode think it looks great um Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take him off camera and I'm going to get him transformed up. Um, I never do this on camera for the first time because I you know, don't want to break it and cry in front of people. Um, I'm going to get him and Grump transformed up and then we will come back with a look at uh, the alt modes. Um, and from there, we'll move on to some comparisons with other bots and then we'll move on to some final thoughts. So just bear with me and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, and here we are with the alt mode. Um, that was a little bit of a struggle to get get to, I'll be honest. Uh, some fiddly bits. Not horrendous transformations, actually quite intuitive, but again, some of the tolerances are such that it's just a little bit of um, finagling to get things lined up and tabbed in, and I tab one thing in and another thing would pop out, etc. So, And I just didn't want to break it because I don't really use alt modes much, so the last thing I want to do is, is really struggle with the figure to get it into alt mode um, and potentially break it when my bots are pretty much displayed in bot mode for 99% for of the time. It's only really these reviews that I transform them for. But anyway, I've, I've got him into his, uh, into his uh, alt mode pretty well, pretty well transformed. Um, you know, it's a, it's not a bad looking alt mode. It's certainly more uh, accurate to the cartoon model than what came before. That's for sure. Um, as you see, it lines up pretty well. There's not too many. Well, there's not too there's not too much of a gap to be seen on this side. Um, it's probably less so on this side as well. I, I did have a lot of trouble getting these bits to pop to 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 sort of fit in. There's some little tabs there which are hard enough to push in. Um, the, the single biggest issue I've had, and I think it's popped out again, is this chest piece. Yeah, it has. Now, this this chest piece has a couple of little um, notches there which go onto tabs here. And I found with the way these align, um, it's difficult to find the point to which these need to go uh, to fit in onto these tabs here. Um, it, it is just a bit tricky to find where they where they go um, and to get them past the it's these arms you see you need to get this piece to fit in between these arms um, and then once that's in you see it has a tendency to knock the arms um, and it also knocks this bumper out which I've done again so I've actually just made that worse. And <laughs> you can see I've popped it all out again. It is a bit annoying. Um, I don't find this to be particularly satisfying. Um, it's probably the worst bit of it. But, I mean, you can see for illustration, as I say, I'm not going to mess around with it too much to get it completely clean. I did have it tabbed in earlier, but it's obviously come untabbed again. Um, you you can also change the guns. As I say, you know, I, I think I've demonstrated similar things on previous fans' toys videos. These just um, rotate so, and then they clip into the little notches that are on the top, and then you can have the guns mounted for storage if you so desire. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with the blues. Uh, some people prior to the release said that um, it looked like the blues were mismatched. Well, they look pretty good on mine. They're not, they're not really anything that I'm seeing that's mismatched there. And yeah, again, under this light, it looks more akin to the colour you'd expect for gears, that darker blue. But under sort of naked, you know, to the naked eye and the natural light, it does look a little bit lighter. Um, but when you put this kind of metallic paint under this harsh artificial light, it does take on a darker appearance. A bit like uh, if you've ever seen uh, the fans toys Cyclonus, that does the same thing. And their Galvatron, they all look different under an artificial and natural light. Uh, dependent um so yeah i think you know 
it's a pretty nice looking alt mode really uh, it looks pretty faithful to the tune model if i bring in grump here which was actually a lot harder to to get into alt mode i will say and yeah i i just i gave up trying to tab the wheels in on grump because they're a real pain and i obviously i'm only doing this for demo purposes um but you can just see like it, it looks reminiscent of gears but it actually looks nothing like the the cartoon model whereas this does look a lot uh, more similar um, so yeah another win another easy win for fans toys in this department as well i would say I, you know there's obviously still a lot of gaps in bag cubes grump it doesn't really fit together particularly well it's a very plasticky looking thing um, yeah it's just all told this is just a much better alt mode um, just just looks the part uh, not that I ever use them, but if, if uh, alt modes are your thing, then this is uh, certainly a much, much better option for you for uh, for tune accuracy. And even if you're not really into the tune accuracy, it's still just a much nicer vehicle. Um, it looks better. It's much sturdier. You know, there's some there's some sort of heft to it with the die cast that's in there. Um, and it just, yeah, I, to, to my mind, it looks a lot better than, than Grump here. Anyway, that's all about, about all I have to say about the alt mode. Again, not my favourite part of them. I'm, I'm much more of a bot mode display person. Um, so I'm just going to get this uh, transformed back into his bot mode. And uh, I think then we'll probably come back with some comparisons and see where we go. Okay, and just to give you um, a look at uh, a few other figures in comparison, as I said I would, uh, I brought a few of the Fans Toys releases. Um, I thought these were probably the best guys because they stylistically they all match. So I think he looks really good. I think scale wise he's pretty good. He's he's significantly taller than Cliff Jumper here, which is what he should be. Um, but still that little bit shorter than Braun and Huffer. I and mean, obviously their Braun is I think it's more of an A stance, so he's not going to be as tall compared to him as he would be. But Huffer there you can see is that little bit higher, or a little bit taller, sorry, um than <clears throat> than gears here so that works really well um and cliff jumper as i say being a smaller bot he's that little bit smaller again um you actually see going back to what i said earlier in the video this is one of the vinyl stickers um, that i was sent and i really like these because um the red characters or the exclusively red colored ones always have the white outlines to denote the faction symbols so it's really nice to be able to use this. Um, as you can see, as the chap mentioned to me when he sent the, the, the stickers, or um, they they don't, or, or decals, um, it's really difficult to cut small lines, fine lines, um, which is why you'll see this, this is quite thick compared to some of the dry rubs that you'll get out there. But I like the overall look. Um, and I'm going to replace the, the one I have on my side swipe, my bag cube steamroll, um, to, to use one of these as well. I haven't actually gotten around to it yet, but... Uh, that's just to see what they look like. They they look really nice. Um, they are a bit of a pain to apply, I will say that. But they do give a better effect, I think, than a water slide um, or a sticker. Um, and I need to probably do one for Huff here because you can see I've got a, an actual sticker. Um, that's not a water slide. It's a, it's a, just a sticker that I had lying around um, because otherwise it wouldn't have worked very well. Um, but it just, you know, it still gets lost. Whereas a full-on vinyl piece would not do that it would retain its color and it would show up better against the metallic paint it wouldn't look you know when i look at it in person it looks a bit red but you get bleed for the purple bef behind so it doesn't look as good anyway i'm going on tangent again aren't i but uh yeah together i think these look good collectively they are a a, a good um or a, a coherent sort of set and uh, what i was talking about again the stylized paint you know on uh, brawn here you have the more golden than yellow uh, and it's metallicized um, and again this pu this purple here and here they are they have metallic flex in them and the same with the the blue arms here um, not so much you know it's more of a flat color on cliff jumper but i still think these these three look really good together and for the love of god please fans toys if you're if you're watching please do a wind charger we're all dying for a good wind charger. It's the it's the one figure now out of my mini bots that doesn't really 
um, doesn't really stick to the new tune aesthetic. Everyone else, you know, B, um, Cliffy here, uh, these three guys, you know, they all look now like modern masterpiece representations. Um, but uh, poor old X-Transbot's um, boost, he, he's lagging behind now. So we need a good wind charger, please. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's uh, let's get these guys out of the way and uh, I'll be back with my final thoughts. Okay, so I'll try and keep these uh, final thoughts uh, briefer than usual. Um, on the whole, you know, I know I've been away for a while and this is the first review back, but on the whole, I'm really happy with this guy. Uh, I think it's a really nice figure to come back to. Um, um, I've been critical of fans' toys in the past. You know, I was uh, not happy with some of the QC issues with their cliff jumper. Uh, but this figure is pretty good. I, I, I don't think there are any major QC issues with it. I, I do like the way it looks overall. As I say, it's not 100% tune accurate. Um, and I do think Takara would make a, probably a more accurate version because they really do nail that tune aesthetic um, perfectly um, most of the time. Um, but they have clearly have no interest in releasing figures like Gears and, and, and uh, you know, the sort of ancillary characters. They're, they're far more interested in doing the main characters and about 50 different versions of Bumblebee and Optimus every year. So it's great that we get companies like Fans Toys who will have a stab um, at these, uh, these characters that wouldn't get much love. Um, and all right, they have their own stylized aesthetic, but they are really leaning more into the tune aesthetic now. So, you know, when I look at you know, their brawn, their huffer and gears collectively, these, you know, similarly sized bots, they all look really coherent. And, and I do really like the way they look. It's just a lovely, clean looking figure all round, isn't it? You know, we can see it just holds together really well um, and it evokes the spirit of the character. And that's what I always look for. And uh, it really is a big leap up from from what we have with Grump. So I'm very happy with it. Um, transformation, you know, was what it was. It's not horrendous, uh, not super easy, but not horrendous. Um, and the alt mode, again, is what it is. It, Gears is not the most inspiring alt mode, but it, it looks it looks nice enough. Um, and it holds together pretty well next to the other, other mini bots. And uh, yeah, so I think... I have no issue at all with recommending this figure if you can still get your hands on it. I, I think it's a really nice uh, representation of the character. You know, a character that for me, I haven't really mentioned much about my love of the character over the course of the video, but for me, not just the the, the uh, episode uh, changing gears and his other appearances in the tune, it was, it's really the Marvel iteration of the character that, that I love. You know, I remember his appearances in those early Marvel issues when he teamed up with Spider-Man. Um, even though Transformers doesn't officially take place in the main Marvel universe, and that was some other weird alternate Spider-Man, apparently. Um, I just, you know, I loved that depiction of the character, that gruff kind of exterior, but who would sacrifice himself for the greater good. Um, and yeah, I, I, that, I think for me, that's why Gears has stuck with me, where some people don't really have much affinity for or care for Gears. But uh, much like Wind Charger, I have a soft spot for Wind Charger because of the UK specific stories with him, uh, where he teamed up with Ravage. Um, you know, I really, really do. And again, Braun, similarly, more for his cartoon, not less, sorry, less for his cartoon depiction, more for his Marvel depiction, where he um, had to fight Starscream and trial by combat and stuff like that. So a lot of the UK comics are responsible for my love of the mini bots, where they got a lot more love and attention than they did as background characters in the tune where they, they played second fiddle to, to characters like Bumblebee, Will, Jack, Optimus, you know, Ironhide. So anyway, yep. Another great figure um, from fans toys, you know, pretty, pretty damn good overall. Um, so absolutely hundred percent recommend this. If you have a gear shaped hole in your heart or collection, um, I cannot remember for the life of me what the next thing I have on order is. Uh, it might be the Fans Toys Inquisitor, uh, their Scourge, which I'm hoping they knock out of the park because I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with that. I like the X-Transbots version, but Fans Toys, I think, given the time they've got to build upon that release, can come out with something really special there. I hope. Fingers crossed. Um, I do have something else on order. I forget what it is. Honestly, really... My memory is terrible. Oh, Abaddon. Yeah. So 
X Transbox Galvatron, you know, it was initially supposed to launch in summer. Then at the end of the year, now who knows? Uh, I'm really hoping it does come this year because it looks like a great figure and I'd love to have it to complement my X Transbox Magnus, but we'll see. But, but anyway, I, there will be at least one more review from me before the end of the year with Inquisitor. Um, I haven't decided whether I'm going to go in on the Constructicons yet. I really don't know. We'll, we'll have to see with those. But I'm... I am probably slowing down a bit because, you know, I've, I've now got decent cartoon representations of most of the characters I care about from season one. And that's really only where my love lies, is season one movie and then maybe some season two characters. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sort of diminishing returns now. Like I'm not going to get like minor upgrades. That's why I haven't bought multiple versions of Prime that have come out, um, like the new Light of Freedom 2. Um, yeah, I... I so, so you'll probably see fewer videos from me on figures going forward, but I'm, I'm hoping to sort of produce showcase episodes on certain characters, etc. Anyway, I said I'd try and keep this brief, and I, I, in classic style, I haven't. So I, I will I will cut it off there. But all it all it remains for me to say is that uh, I'll try not to let it go as long uh, between videos next time. And thanks for tuning in, uh, and especially to those of you who do subscribe and have regularly watched my videos. Um, so yeah, I hope everyone out there is keeping well and uh, yeah, just remains for me to say, take care everyone and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.